Hey, when implementing a search feature, we don't want to issue an HTTP request for each character the user types. Here I'll type TIE. Notice in the Network Console that an HTTP request was issued for each entered letter. Luckily, I typed fast enough that all but the last request was canceled, but we'd still hit the server three times. I'll clear the console and try it again a bit slower. T-I-E. Each character issues an HTTP request. With my slower typing and fast connection, I've hit the backend server three times, received three responses, and updated the UI three times. Not very efficient for the user or for our backend server. In this video, I walk through one way to implement a more efficient search feature using debouncing and the new experimental resource API. I'm in StackBlitz with my simple demo application open. I'm using Swappy to display a list of Star Wars vehicles. In the template, the search string uses two-way binding with the entered search signal. Our task is to retrieve the vehicles that match the entered string. We'll use the pragmatic resource API method, HTTP resource. I'll define a vehicle's resource and set it equal to HTTP resource. The response is of type vehicle response. We'll pass in a reactive function since we want the resource to be reactive and change every time the entered search signal changes. We return the URL from this function. I'll paste it in. Here we define the search query parameter and set it to the entered search signal. We use parentheses to read the signal. Now we can change the vehicle signal to reference the resource value signal. We'll use computed and access the vehicle's resource value signal. If the value signal is set, we'll access its results property for the list of vehicles. Otherwise, we'll return an empty vehicle array. If this code is new to you, consider watching my HTTP resource first look video for more details. Find the link below in this video's description. In the UI, since our search string is empty, we see the first page of vehicles. I'll open the network console and we can try it out. Just as we saw in the earlier demo, this code issues an HTTP request every time the user enters a character. We don't really need to issue the request until the user stops typing. For that, we need debouncing. What is debouncing? It's a programming technique that consolidates events that happen within a specified short amount of time. Say we set a debounce time for our search feature to 400 milliseconds. When the user types a character, the timer starts counting to 400 milliseconds. If the user types another character before the timer reaches that 400, the timer restarts. As the user continues to type, the timer keeps restarting. When the user stops typing for 400 milliseconds, the consolidated events, in our case the set of entered characters, are processed as a single action. Since debouncing is time-based, it requires asynchronous processing. But our signals are synchronous. They don't understand the concept of time. But you know what does understand time? Observables. One way to handle debouncing is with an observable. Our first step is to identify what exactly needs to be debounced. In our example, it's the entered search signal bound to the search string text box. Let's declare an observable. I'll call it search text dollar equals, we want the entered search signal as an observable, so to observable, and pass in this dot entered search. With this observable, we can pipe the emitted value through an operator. RxJS provides a debounce time operator. Let's set that time to 400 milliseconds. But we can't use the observable in our HTTP resource, so after the value has been debounced, we need it back in a signal. I'll declare a search text signal equals to signal and our observable, this dot search text dollar. Let's take a step back and look at that again. 
We can't debounce our signals directly because they are synchronous and don't have the concept of time. We instead create an observable and emit each signal change into that observable. Those emissions are debounced using the debounce time operator. But to use the result in our HTTP resource, it has to be a signal, so we emit the debounce search string into a new signal. Our last step is to react to this search text signal. Change the URL search parameter to this dot search text. And be sure to leave the parentheses to read the signal and reference the signal, not the observable here. Let's try it out. I'll open the network console so we can again watch the HTTP requests. I'll quickly type in TIE and notice that the characters were consolidated into one HTTP request. So we only hit the backend server one time, received a response one time, and updated the UI one time. It works! Yay! If debouncing is a common requirement, you may want to create a utility function. Let's do that. Open Explorer, click New File, and I'll name it signal-utilities.ts. Close Explorer for more space. I'll export a function and name it, hmm, how about debounce signal? I'll make it generic, so of t. The function takes in a signal of type signal of t and the desired debounce time of type number. We could write the body of the function in one line, but to make the code a bit clearer, we'll separate it into two lines. First, define the observable from the signal. Let debounced observable dollar equal to observable, and provide the passed in signal to debounce. Then pipe, and we'll again use debounce time, and use the passed in time as the argument. Then we return to signal of that observable. That's it. Back in the service, we can delete the two observable code here and change our search text signal to use our debounce signal function. We'll pass in our entered search signal and 400 milliseconds for the time. I'll open the console to see if it still works. Type in TIE, success. Use this technique of two observable and then two signal anytime you need to debounce user entry, such as a search feature or autocomplete. If you'd like to see how to implement this same feature using the resource or Rx resource methods, check out the sample code. It's linked below in this video's notes. Have you had success with a different technique for debouncing with the resource API? Drop a comment below with your thoughts or questions. Thanks for watching. If this video was useful, please like and subscribe.